In this video, you'll learn everything you need to know about Photoshop Mode 2. Welcome to Webrix Home and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to Webrix Home. In this video, we'll talk about the Photoshop Mode 2 and all the options it offers to help us use the Mode 2 more easily. So, this is the Move tool and the shortcut key for Move tool is V and when you click on this option you can see the options related to Move tool appears on the options bar. If you have seen my previous video then you should know that with each Photoshop tool the option bar changes. So let's have a look what we've got over here. The first thing you should know about is Photoshop Move tool is used to move the layers objects from the document layer in Photoshop and if you try to move anything over here, just click and drag it, left or right, top or bottom. But at this moment, this dialog box appears that says couldn't use the move tool because the layer is locked. Hit it OK. And this is because the layer is locked. And if you see here in the layers panel, there's a little lock icon over here. And this prevents you from moving this object. Just double click on the lock icon and you should see a dialog box that allows you to change the name of your document and then select the color of what you prefer for the document layer. And then the blending mode, we haven't talked about blending mode as of now and we'll keep it normal. Then the opacity thing over here to make the layer transparent or translucent. Let's name it background and hit OK. Now you can see the layer is renamed as background and the lock icon is gone. So now on the workspace, you can click and drag the object wherever you want. You can do much more things beyond this. But as of now, the first thing for the move tool is used to move the document. So you can align it to the bottom, to the top, wherever you want. All right. But let's look at the options bar then. What options you have got? The first option on the options bar is the current selected tools itself. And if you have got some presets saved in a computer, then you can load it from here from settings load tool presets, reset tools, uh, save some presets as well. We'll talk about presets a bit later in some videos, but as of now, let's leave it. Then you have got the auto select option and this allows you to select the object you want to move from the document layer if you have multiple documents over here. So let's add up some documents over here, place, and then add some documents. Okay, I'll resize it a bit hit enter then again add a couple of more so if you see here on our layers panel you can see a couple of layers over here with each of the file I added to the document and if you can't see this layers panel you can go to the window and hit layers and it's up here so if I need to move any object let's check it off as of now if i need to move any object from the workspace i need to go to the layers panel and select the layer that i want to move so let's say i want to move the bokeh i click on it and then move it and i click on move the man and field layer and move it if i want to move the orangutan i need to select it and move it and if i need to move the background i need to select and move it so this is a bit hectic when you're just starting with Photoshop and alternatively what you can do is select the auto select option over here and then you don't need to go here and select your layers you can simply click on the layer and drag it and you can see the layers are selected over here click and drag it click and drag it or click and drag it all right so this makes it easier when you're starting with the Photoshop to move the documents easily without going on your layers panel and selecting the layers you want this is quite handy when you're working with lesser number of layers right so if you've got five or ten layers you can easily move it with auto select but if you have over 50 or hundreds of layers on your layers panel then it's a lot tougher to use the auto select tool instead you want to go to the layers panel and click on the layer you want to drag and use the move tool to drag it because a lot of layers might be so close to each other that when you try to move one you might accidentally click on the other one and the layer mode all right after auto select let's check this off then you have got the group option over here then you can click on here here's the group and layer so this basically means either you want to move the group or the layer so the, here are only layers so we can only work with layers as of now so you can see without the auto select option if i click it and drag it the layer selected is moving it's not moving right so let's create a group then and see what it does so let's go on and add some objects then to make a group I'll keep it this way and then I've got a text over here I'll move it as well over here and properly align them now 
In this scenario, if I need to move this object and then move this object as well and then align it accordingly with the logo, let's see this is the logo, then I need to do it twice, right? So I need to drag the text layer, then drag the image layer and then check if the alignment is proper, right? Alternatively, you can simply select these two layers, hold your control or command key and hit on the layer. So both of the layers are selected. I'm just going to drag it into this folder icon and release it over here. So you can see a group is created. This works similar to what directories do in File Explorer. So we've created a folder here, a group here, and that's holding the image and the text inside. So I can click it over here. Let's rename it logo. Now, if I want to move these two together, I can simply select the group and set up the individual layers and move it this way. All right. Alternatively, we can also do if it's not in the group, we can simply select these two holding the control key and then move it. But it helps keeping things organized in Forza. So with our select option, if you select the group, then whenever you select layers, it's going to select the layers. But whenever you are going to select the object from a group, it's going to select the group itself. So if you go with the layers option over here, auto select will select individual layer instead of the group. So I guess that's clear. Then we have got the sort transform controls. And if you go with the sort transform controls, it displays dots and edges of the objects selected on the layer panel. You can see that, All right? So with the option here, you can resize objects easily without needing to hit any further option. But if you're happy with size, you can hit an OK. Uh, if you want to cancel, you can simply reject the change. So these are the options. Those are initially available in Forza Mode 2. Let's uncheck all of this. Then you have got some alignment options over here, which are disabled by default. And there's a reason why these are disabled. For these alignment options, it needs some reference points. Let's say we have this entire document as a reference point. Just hit Ctrl and A and the document area is selected. And with the document window selected, you can see the six options are available now. You can hover over any of the options and you can see what they do. So this says align top edges. Let's align the group itself. So let's say it's logo. I want to align it on the top. So you can see the object moved to the top. So I want to align it vertically at the center of the document. This is the option. Then you have got vertically at the bottom. So the bottom edges of the layer group is aligned with the document bottom. Then here's the left alignment, center alignment, and right alignment. All right. So if you want to keep it exactly at the center, horizontally as well as vertically, you can hit the vertical alignment as well as horizontal alignment. And you can see the object is at the center of the document. And these alignment options are still unavailable because these objects require at least three layers selected to be available. So let's see how it works. Let's move this out of the group and delete the group. Now I'm going to select all three of these and you can see these six options are available. With the first distribution option, it distributes top edges. Each of the objects are positioned equally from the top then this is the center alignment so each of these objects are aligned at the center with equal distance and then there's the bottom alignment you can see from the bottom then you have got the left alignment you can see the distance between these three objects are equal then distribute horizontal centers so the center of each of the objects equal and the left alignment so these are auto alignment options that are lesser used in Forza because most of the times we want to take control over the document how it appears right alternatively you can simply hold the control or command key and hit a thumbnail icon of any object to select its area let's say i hit here at the background and you can see the background image is selected it's a bit on the top as of now and then select the layer you want to align and then use the alignment option so you can see it's gone to the top and that's invisible as of now Let's keep it at the bottom and that will effectively come at the bottom of the selection edges and let's make it horizontally center as well. Then the last option this is still unselected, right? I've got three images. One, two, and three. Three images of Eiffel Tower and all are quite similar. That's the requirement of that alignment option. Let's select all three of them. 
and you can see the option is available now let's see what it does now you can see there's an auto alignment option with the predicted projection how it appears and here are a couple of options like auto alignment perspectives college cylindrical spherical reposition let's try any one of these let's say perspective and there's a lens correction option and this basically demands all those images should be taken with the same camera lens and aperture so we don't have that thing i just downloaded it from online sources so let's keep it as it is check out the lens correction option and hit ok so you can see how it has aligned object the focal object is similar in all three images and it tries to align all of them the way it thinks they look better and one most important thing is this option requires at least 40 percent of the object should be overlapping in each of those images all right so that's all about photoshop mod tool we'll talk about other tools in upcoming videos that's all for today thanks for watching and please subscribe us for more videos thank you